So my checklist in the morning is always the 4Ms checklist. And this is machine, monitoring, Mabels, that's M-A-B-E-L-S, Mabels, and that's airway equipment, and finally medications. So those are some of the things we're gonna go through. So let's start with the first M, and this is machines. So these fancy machines are really great. For example, usually in the morning, my nurses are fantastic. They already go through the integrated checklist and the full machine test that is automated. Back in the old days, you'd have to do it this manually, but these days on the new machines, you can literally press this button, full test, and then it goes through a full checklist. I might do that in another video. What I do is I literally go to show log and make sure that all of these things have been passed. For example, ventilating gas passed on this date with a leak that's okay. So it's less than 100 mils. Generally up to 250 mils is okay. If it's greater than 250 mils, you really wanna to talk to your supervisor. The circuit lease has been passed. Again, the date is today's date and it's less than 100, so that's fantastic. And now the low pressure leaks are often done uh, once a week or so, but again, this is, has all been passed and it's fine. What I do then is, I, even though I know that the machine check has been done, I make sure that a few other things are also really good. For example, I go around to the back of the machine to make sure that I have a self-inflating Liddell bag or a bag mask valve. And this means that if this machine was to stuff up in any way, it's a very complicated device. It's, you know, with a couple hundred thousand dollars at least, you can, still do most of the essential functions, which is positive pressure ventilation with a Liddell bag. So if something went really wrong with this machine, the Liddell bag would be absolutely fine for this. So that's the first thing. So I make sure that the machine has been checked and I have a Liddell bag. Let's go on to Mabel's. So Mabel's, M-A-B-E-L-S, stands for masks. So I check that I've got a mask and, it's, and I've got also a range of sizes. It's usually in one of the drawers. And see here, I've got a range of sizes of masks that can fit pretty much any face. A is for airways, so I'm just making sure that I have Goodell's airways. Again, we'll go through this in a later airway talk um, that I'll upload soon, and also nasopharyngeal airways. Finally, LMAs in a range of sizes, and again, kept in the drawer, usually there's a three, four, and five LMA. B is for bougie, now this, you can get these really fancy bougies that look like this, or you can just get the normal ones, which look like this. And this, this bougie or a stilette is fantastic when it comes to you know, managing difficult airways. So that's all sorted. E is for ETT. Again, I look in the drawer, make sure I've got a range of ETTs and sizes. A six, seven, eight size tube is usually what I need. L is for laryngoscope. And this device is absolutely essential, obviously, for, for intubating to getting that airway exposure to put the tube down into the trachea. I make sure I have two laryngoscope blades, a size three and four Mac blade. I just make sure without touching the blade that this is working, you know, that the light is working, which you might be able to see through there, that it's working just fine. Then I check both of these because you definitely want this to work when you need it and having the light out or the battery blown or the bulb blown is, uh, you know, just a really difficult situation to deal with. Finally, suction. So I make sure that my suction is on maximum and then I just check through here that it's working. You can hear that sound. And if I was to put my hand on the end of that, it would show me that the suction was working because you'd feel some traction on the skin. Put that safely away. So that's Mabel's, M-A-B-E-L-S. Next, I go to monitoring. So monitoring, this machine here has so many different measurements that it takes, especially with ventilator alarms and pressure alarms, apneic alarms. But really the essential things I need in any situation are a SATS probe, a blood pressure cuff, an ECG, and end tidal CO2. So if I look over here in this particular machine, here I've got a SATS probe, here I've got the blood pressure tubing and a cuff will be present, and then I've got the ECG leads here, and finally end tidal CO2 is already attached to my mask, and that then leads up this wire through some sidearm sampling all the way to this connection over here. And as soon as I've got that on the patient, it will receive a signal which shows that I've got end tidal CO2, just along this trace here. So that's my monitoring. The absolute essentials I'd need is saturation probe, blood pressure cuff, ECG dots for you know ECG monitoring of the heart rhythm, and then end tidal CO2. And I can go into those in another video. Finally, I go over to my trolley. Now medications, these are absolutely vital, obviously. Now, the way I think about this is, there's obviously a lot of medications I need in anesthesia, but the ones I need in an emergency are my spa drugs, SP, AAA. So first of all, I need a fast-acting relaxer, 
and here it is, succinothonium, or even high dose rocuronium at 1.2 milligrams per kilogram. I need propofol, which is here, and then I need atropine, adrenaline, and aramine and ephedrine. So just to go through those, here's atropine, make sure I've got that. Again, every draw is different depending on which hospital you work at. I've got aramine, which is the trade name for metaraminol, which is just here. And there's another type of aramine in, in, that's concentrated in a vial and adrenaline over here in different concentrations. I always think of ephedrine as well because that is like adrenaline, but just not as potent and much easier to use in more, most anesthetic circumstances. Now those medications are obviously really important for a number of reasons. Now, the reason I chose my spa drugs or sucks, prop propofol, atropine, adrenaline, aramine versus all the other drugs is because these drugs are so vital in the most emergent situations. For example, if a patient has laryngospasm or is fighting the ventilator or something serious happens, a rapid acting muscle relaxant can really help an anesthetist solve those problems. Again, these drugs are not to be given by a junior, junior practitioners or ones who are not experienced and should always be done with supervision. So a muscle relaxant, absolutely vital uh, to solve a lot of your problems. P is for propofol, and again, propofol deepens the anesthetic, make sure that your patient is asleep and can treat all things like a patient moving as well as hypertension. And again, you'll see one of our medications videos which goes into that in a bit more detail. Now, often with anesthetics, especially in kids, hypoxemia can cause bradycardia and atropine is a solution for that. And there's a lot of different vagal type stimuluses that can happen during an operation bezel jarish reflexes, bagel reflexes, and these can cause very severe bradycardias and even, even asystole. So having atropine ready to go is absolutely vital. Adrenaline is probably the most common sense emergency drug you need because any time a patient is close to rest, peri-arrest or even arrest, you need to give that dose. It's a treatment for arrest, it's a treatment for peri-arrest, it's a treatment for ve vena dilation, vasodilation, as well as poor contractility. And adrenaline is a fantastic treatment for nap anaphylaxis, increasing that central blood volume distribution through vasoconstriction, but also inhibiting mast cells that degranulate all that histamine everywhere. Finally, aramine and ephedrine. These are the most common medications that you use on a day-to-day -day basis after the induction of anesthesia. Because as we know, giving propofol or another drug for induction causes venodilation and vasodilation. And the easiest thing to do there is give it a small dose of aramine or metaraminol, and that just tightens the veins and the arteries to improve your perfusion. Likewise, occasionally, sometimes your patient just doesn't have great contractility. Maybe you've, you've given some medications, some beta blockers, or maybe the induction itself has caused the heart just not, just not to function as well. Now, there's some occasions where you need to use ephedrine. Now, ephedrine has more you know, inotropy and beta effects than alpha effects. So, whereas aramine or metaraminol does veno and vasoconstriction, Ephedrine does a bit of venoconstriction and vasoconstriction, but also is a positive inotrope. And that's absolutely fantastic when you have a patient who might not have a very good heart, maybe they've got poor contractility or a poor injection fraction, or you've given a bit too much anesthetic and you just need to improve the heart function. So aramine and ephedrine, really, really commonly used and very important drugs in this situation. So obviously there's a lot of other medications that you need for an anesthetic, but these are the absolute vital ones that you need. So hopefully that's helped. We've gone through your overall preparation, which is your four M's, and that's Mabel's, Machine, Medications, and Monitoring. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks very much.